I'm glad that she is again with us, second time with us, and I'm sure that you will enjoy it tonight. And we wish you really pleasant contact with our players we, and coaches. We are always supervised by Boana, you have to know this, how she works, but I'm sure that you will all enjoy it. Thank you. Take All right. And is it okay now this time? All Okay. Okay. You can hear me, right? All right. Um, uh, having in mind how my English is, I will try to keep um, to, to to try to keep on uh, speaking a bit slower than I usually do, so that you can all um, catch on and then follow what I'm saying. Um, if something you don't really um, understand uh, well enough, or you think you don't understand at all, you can stop me and I will explain. Um, there is no problem and relax. Interaction is good, interaction is great, so um, um, even if I have to change some things about the lesson and make it shorter, it is much more important to me to answer your uh, questions or to help you out while I'm here these couple of days. So this is what we're going to uh, talk about a bit today. Um, I say a bit because um, it's a lecture of uh, one hour. Um, it is more of a lecture for coaches uh, than it is for um, the players, but I will try to, to adjust it along the way. Okay, so the topic is processing of success and failure in competitive team sports. And what we are going to learn today about a bit more and open up windows in the head, as I like to say, is what is success and how we should um, see it and what is failure or defeat and how we should approach that as well. Okay, this is just an outline of this whole lesson. I will not waste more time here. So uh, what I did also about the, the lecture is uh, there's much more uh, words and, and more text in the slide than usually because um, it is easier for people that don't really speak English that well to follow up on everything. So uh, there is no such thing, right, as true failure. We actually learn from all the situations that um, happen to us on every training session and on every during every great game, or um, the things that we actually analyze after the game. So what we do need to to improve upon is the way we uh, look at success and failure and uh, how it could be, or what are all the different ways that we can look at um, those uh, aspects um, of the game or of uh, sport uh, as it is. And what do we need to focus on? It's warm from here. What do we need to focus on uh, in winning? And what do we need to focus on um, if or when losing happens or defeat happens? How can we handle that? Um, if somebody wants to take a photo of the slide, that's totally okay. I'll just keep watching and stop so that you can do that. So what is success? How do we usually see it? And whenever I ask you something during the lecture, think about the association that you have when I say that. That's very important. If we were to work one-on-one, -on -one, I would want to hear what you're thinking about when I say something, because that would tell me a lot about you, and that's the way you learn about yourself as well when you work with the psychologist in general and in sports as well. Have you, have any of you had any experiences with the psychologist so far that you want to share? Thank you. Anybody else? No, not yet. I would like to hear the yet part. Um, do you know what we do in sports? No? Work with players, okay? Yeah, yeah. We're working with motivate them. Motivate them. Okay. Yes, that's what we do. We we actually help you um, uh, maximize your potential, your mental pot potential, and through that, we help you maximize your physical or let's say tactical potential, or in this case, uh, maximize your handball potential. That's what we do. That's what a uh, a coach can use us for. To, to get the, the uh, goals that they have set up for themselves and for their team um, reached, actually, and, and achieved. So how do we see success? Usually, we see it as a win. So if we want a game, 
that's success. That's how we usually see it. That's what we think about first when we say success in sports. So at uh, the club level, it's a game. It's, we were, we're, we um, think of winning Champions League. It depends on which level you are, or a cup or a challenge cup. On a national team level, we also think about winning a game. We think about the winning European Championship, World or Championship, or the Olympic Games. That's what we usually think about when we say success in sports. But what is it really? This is the uh, definition of success. So it's actually an accomplishment of something you wanted to accomplish. So you reached something, that, a certain goal, or you uh, learned how to do something, certain maybe a certain action or a certain move, whatever. That's actually what it is. And uh, <laughs> what we do want to um, accent from here is uh, that um, what you really need to, to focus on and coaches, so players and coaches, for in the process of uh, developing through sports, you uh, uh, don't need to, uh, first of all, uh, or shouldn't, first of all, uh, uh, focus on, uh, listen to this carefully, not winning. The point of the whole process is to learn. And while you learn, uh, steps are made, time passes, uh, uh, defense, offense. So time passes, actions pass during a certain game, right? And practice from a practice to a practice, practices pass, you are learning. And that is the process of success and winning. And if all that goes well, you will win the game at the end. And the similar thing to that is whenever I speak with players, I tell them, to, uh, we should not, the players, should not focus on what is the score or not be uh, that focused on that. You can, of course, uh, at the halftime or at the end of the game. What players need to be focused on more during a game is to do what you, uh, to do things that you agreed upon with your coach. And if you do them step by step as you agree, and after, let's say, timeouts, new agreements, new moves, just uh, focus on, as we like to say, the present, what is happening right now, and go step by step. You use that term as well. And at the end, if everything that you agreed upon, of course, we're talking good players, good coaches, right? Or top players, top coaches. At the end, when you look at the scoreboard, it will always be positive on your side. So you will be in the plus. You have to be. If everything is, um, if the player is uh, well developed, so he's a, um, uh, especially a top player, and, or the top coach, the well developed coach as well. Um, what people that are not on that level yet need to do is to teach yourself to think that way, to accept the process of learning as it is, and to be patient. Be motivated, of course, as well. To be patient enough to reach a certain level after a lot of work is invested. When I say a lot of work, we, we are talking about years. We all are aware of that. Um, uh, something else that I would also um, accent here is, um, I mentioned that today with a person. Um, if you have certain potential and uh, uh, you see it, or even better, you have uh, people that are competent tell you that you have certain potential. Uh, it is a very helpful thing to hear because uh, it is directly affecting your self-awareness. You're becoming more aware of uh, your potentials. And uh, uh, try in those situations with, I mean, those people that, let's say, are maybe even lucky enough to have the information at the right moment, just try to use it the best way, which means invest in your development. Work, uh, try to find people, uh, better uh, people that you uh, can work with than the ones that are you're working right now. Or ask other people, an example, ask here. That's one of the reasons why uh, camps are organized uh, with uh, experts, is to give you an opportunity to speak with somebody that you don't have the opportunity to speak with every single day because you work on different levels at this moment. But um, why not give yourself a chance and uh, make the step and come at certain places like these uh, to ask people um, to evaluate you, like here during this week, 
um, to tell you uh, on which aspects you need to work on, where do you need to, to uh, where do you need more help, uh, what help you need, who do you need to contact for that, and things like that. So invest in yourself and use your potential because um, if you are born with a certain potential uh, and uh, you don't use it throughout your life, what's the point of being aware of, or knowing or hearing at a certain time, period of time in your life that you have a potential? If you didn't use it, it is the same as if you didn't have it. So uh, please be, uh, become more aware of yourself, ask others, um, uh, to help you invest in yourself and to reach certain um, levels that uh, you should be on with those potentials that you have. I hope you understood what I meant because that's like uh, one of the most important goals of my job is that to have uh, to help the player reach uh, reach the level of uh, of awareness and investment. Um, what usually or what can happen in certain situations is. Uh, uh, for example, when coaches focus, here it is, <laughs> the pointer, I like to use my finger, but here it is the pointer. Um, when coaches often, uh, often uh, or just too often if you ask me, focus their attention on certain players that have certain potentials in their team, and they don't focus the same attention for the, the, to, uh, toward the do those that don't have that potential. So that's, I'm speaking to coaches right now, don't do that. Uh, we are not allowed to do that to our players, everybody, anybody from the team staff. Uh, we need to, to be there for each and every one of them the same way. And uh, that's also something how, or the way how you directly and indirectly influence team bonding, the team coherence their intera interactions, their in in interpersonal relationships. So be very aware of that. We need to be there for uh, every player in our team as equally as we can. I'm changing it a bit along the way, if you can see. So what else is success and how does that make us feel? These are some of the emotions that we feel when uh, we are in the process of success, when we are succeeding in something. So we feel excited, right? You're all euphoric, you've reached something, or maybe you can even have those butterflies in your stomach. Um, you're happy, you're satisfied that something uh, has been reached, right? You, you, you feel a certain um, so-called fulfillment. Then you're proud of yourself. You're very confident in yourself, that means on the personal level, and in your ability, something that you can do, your skill. You are at ease, comfortable feeling, right? Uh, on, uh, I was going to say I'm the man. That's the wrong, wrong example in this case. Um, so you just need to be uh, aware and uh, uh, peaceful with yourself uh, about things that you have achieved through that success. That's what that means. It's a bit complicated, but psychology is not easy, which is why it's so important in certain situations to understand it. Uh, you need to trust yourself. Players and coaches, you need to trust yourself. You need to trust the people that you work with. So players need to trust your teammates and your coach and the team staff. And of course, the team, the coach, the team staff, they need to feel the same uh, or trust the players. Interaction, again, very important. Um, how do you reach that? You talk. Communication, number one. Very important. To be um, aware of how important it is, to uh, be open for it and to use it. Just a second. Okay, I was already mentioning self-awareness. And what is failure? How do we see that? Or, de or defeat? We see it as the loss of the game. That's how usually we look when we lose a game. I also found this picture of a coach to not just look at the players, but to look at how coaches can look in those situations. And what can happen to us but shouldn't is that we think that maybe we were not good enough. That's not good. You don't allow yourself to think that way. You can think, after, for example, what do I ask myself after uh, we lose a game? 
not right in the first second, but maybe in a couple of minutes when I uh, do everything else that I need to concerning my players. I ask myself, what could I have done better? That's, I always ask myself that. So start from yourself. What could I have done better during this game? And if, every, if we could reach the level where everybody in the team, meaning all the players and the whole team staff, have, uh, uh, are aware of this, that um, they need to, to know what exactly they did good and why, and what they did not do so well and why, meaning also how they should have done that. If we all would do that in every team, we would have a very successful sport. So that's personal level, we're not good enough, so not to think about it as that. Just think about what your skills. So see, we at that moment obviously did not have enough knowledge, strength, skill, ability, something of that, or all of it, uh, to achieve in that uh, case, meaning to win that game. So we have personal behavior level. Uh, I will tell you an example from life. Uh, I will use something that was told uh, or shared with us during uh, university years, during study years. Uh, they told us, uh, for example, when you say uh, what you did was stupid, they use that example because it's very understand understandable. Um, it's easy for you to project, and probably somebody has at least once said that some period of your life, or especially when we were little. little. So saying you are stupid and what you did is stupid are to two totally different things, if you understand it, right? Because you're stupid, you're offending somebody on the personal level, and you're not allowed to do that, or of course it's not healthy and all the other things. But on, on the behavior level, saying something was done, not done right is uh, something that is accepted and, let's say, mentally healthy. This is what failure actually is, right? We see the definition again. It's a lack of success. When we didn't reach something, when we didn't achieve something, we failed. Simple, we know that. But how does failure make us feel? So let's think about the situations when you failed at something, or maybe we should just all think how we feel when we lose a game. We're surprised, or some, there are some situations where some people are not surprised, depending on, on, on uh, the level of the team and who they played against. But usually we are surprised, <laughs> we didn't expect it, um, uh, we're shocked, we can be shocked. The, this is how we can look. <coughs> So this is also how, see, no, wait, this reminded me of somebody, it was not from throwing a shoe, <laughs> but a uh, marker or what is that, but see, we have the throwing also. So we are surprised, we're shocked, we're in denial, it's like I was telling you how I felt uh, at with the Croatian team at the Euro 2014 when we lost uh, the second game, it was with Germany and we were out. And I was like, what do you mean we're, we were out? Because I was preparing myself on the team for the final weekend. And I never calculate. I don't like calculation, after calculation. I don't allow my people to calculate because it's not healthy. Uh, only in situations when I have a really good coach that I know that he can personally, and of course professionally, handle calculation, then it is okay, if you ask me. But only then. In all the other situations, don't allow yourself to calculate. Because when you're calculating, you're not in the full power of doing the things that you're doing. Not, you're not, you're calculating, right? You're thinking, okay, maybe, you know, uh, we need, uh, I don't know, this score, this much, and you're doing what when you're calculating? You're stopping yourself from, um, uh, as I was saying a couple of minutes ago, focusing on the present situation, what, what is happening right now, and um, you are not in the moment, you are not in the action, you are in the calculation, maybe comparing something from the past, meaning like a couple of seconds ago, with the future, let's say a couple of seconds, or maybe you're jumping to the end of the game. So no calculating, just present functioning and doing it, doing it maximally. You're frustrated or we get frustrated, we're angry, uh, very disappointed, 
I even asked, uh, maybe like half an hour after that, we sat in the bus and the physio sat by me and I asked her, since uh, it's a really good person and I really, really tr trust her, and I went, um, I asked her, are we really out? I mean, wait. And she was like, yeah, okay, so that's it. So we played a game on Friday in two days with Netherlands um, for ourselves. And it was an additional challenge with that team to win that game, and we won on Friday, but I mean, it didn't count. Can you imagine you're preparing a team to play a game against the Netherlands, and we know how they got now, um, developed. Um, and um, you're preparing a team for a certain game to win a certain game where it, where it doesn't count. And all those people here that are from our country, countries that know our mentality, that is very difficult to prepare a team to win something at, at, at a game that doesn't count. And uh, of course, that all affects the confidence that you have in yourself and the confidence or the belief of uh, your team being able to achieve something or your team's strengths and powers. You start to, to question that. And it's normal. It is normal to feel that way after a game. Especially that evening. I'm not talking about tomorrow. You need to start um, refocusing back on the healthy ways of reacting again. Especially, I mean, if you are, let's say, in today's crazy days, lucky enough to have a chance to work in, with a psychologist in a team, um, or have the ability to uh, contact one yourself and work individually, then um, you will learn a lot of skills to um, feel much more confident and. Even in, in the, let's say, bad situations where um, we just saw how we feel, you will know that it's something that you actually are learning from right now at this moment, even though it's, at that moment, people usually see the a game as lost and don't think about the positivity. So the faster you can start thinking about, hmm, okay, we need to change that, 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 and that, while still being in the hall, thinking about that for yourself, let's say, you're being very constructive, and you're taking the next step. What I don't like to do, I don't know what you think, but what I don't like to do is talk to my players after a loss game. I just let them go, I can hug them, I can be there for them, but, um, or answer if somebody asks something. Uh, but there are, then again, there are certain games that happen that really, uh, they, that uh, uh, you really have the need, especially the head coach, <laughs> to um, tell the team after you get back into the hotel, we will have a meeting in 10 minutes to resume some things, and then we can go to dinner in bed. So it depends, but now we actually, it's like a total different story of our river itself, and if we can talk about it in a couple of minutes. Um, let me just look through this and see what I can say here. Okay, I just said that too, okay? So what we need to do, or always need to do, is to be their support system. While we are teaching you to become better, we always need to be, um, we always actually need to have you feel our support. Even if I yell at you at a certain moment, if you really trust me and we have a good communication, you will, uh, and you do it adequately, knowing what you're saying, of course. Uh, it has to make sense, it has to, you, you, have, you, can, uh, you have to use argument um, uh, or facts. Um, in that case, a player never got mad at me. Because uh, when you know that you, somebody really wants you, only wants you to become better for yourself and for your team, you will never get, get mad at them when they're um, maybe saying something a bit louder. And especially knowing how our sport is dynamic and how actually in certain moments it's aggressive, um, there are situations that we all have had, right? where uh, somebody raised their, their voice. So uh, what you need to know now, the developing coaches and our players, is that yes, there will be good and bad days. Don't think, uh, you know, when you think in the future, like one day when I climb up there to the top, there will be maybe less good days. Or oh, less bad days, sorry. It, it, it just, uh, it's kind of in some aspects, it's a similar thing, just at a different level, right? Um, uh, 
there's a lot of learning up there. And as I was giving an example to a certain volleyball team, team a couple months ago, um, when you get to the top level, you're not talking about mistakes that are uh, at certain lower moments huge and very visible. You're talking about nanomillimeters, you're talking about uh, dots, you're talking about little details at that level. That is the difference. So we all have and experience uh, good and bad things during the, the careers uh, at all different levels, but which is why I'm talking about uh, the right mindset. So we are in a certain process to learn along the way through good and bad experiences. And especially keep that in mind about uh, when um, uh, defeat happens or failure happens. All right. So either success or failure. Look at this coach, look at that coach. What I think is important to accent here for you guys now is that um, um, I found also some of Aja's photos. There's a lot of photos of you with your players, a lot on Google. A lot of hugging, uh, a lot of uh, uh, photos that show your bond with them, a lot. Um, uh, but this will, this were the obvious ones of this example because Kim is standing here. Uh, see, the players are probably running towards the group of the players who are sta standing because uh, on this slide I'm talking about uh, you as a coach giving your players uh, space to experience something. In, uh, in that case, success. So uh, just. Uh, be happy for yourself here at a couple of moments, then later on maybe go towards them. But um, it is kind of a uh, belief that uh, it is healthy for the team to allow the players and the, the, the people that were active on the court to celebrate a bit first and then later on. Uh, but it's kind of, it gets spontaneous on a certain level. It's just something that I just wanted to mention those things to, to um, just let you know that um, there are different ways of acting after a game or reacting to it or um, celebrating in that case as, and in this case as well. See, he's also giving space. He's not talking to anybody. They're just standing. They're all probably in their own thoughts thinking of what the heck just happened. How did we lose it? And the next thoughts are probably what they should have done in certain moments. We're here, we just see emotions. In those situations, uh, there's, you, you celebrate, you're happy, you're not analyzing what happened, especially not in the first um, couple of, uh, maybe even 10, 15 minutes, I was thinking uh, how after a game, uh, you know how you have to go to the press conference, right? The coach and then the player or players that you select. Uh, maybe those are the first thoughts, uh, constructive thoughts actually, not first thoughts, but first constructive thoughts on what I should say, what I could, uh, what they could ask me, what I should say. And, uh, yeah, so just give space before you approach. I think that's, that's I mean, uh, I have seen a couple of situations where um, uh, in the locker rooms, some ex-players entered to celebrate something with us or with the girls, uh, with the team that is a, uh, uh, that they were before a part of, and the team not act reacting very well to the ex players. So that would be a situation where I would tell them, okay, I don't think it's a moment for you to enter right now. Um, okay, and I understand that you want to be a part of something that you were a part before, but you were not a part of this moment. You were not a part of the team in this moment. And of course, by seeing that reaction, I saw what they think about the person. So. Um, that was not a good move for that person, but it didn't affect the happiness in the locker room. You just, I just saw by looking at the faces that the, the person was not welcome. So um, sense, analyze, approach if you see it's okay. Sometimes when it's not, it's okay to not approach, even though you would like to. Just think about it. The more you start to think about yourself and your actions, the more you will what? Invest in yourself, right? Because you will get aware of uh, where do you need to change uh, or if you, you might uh, have a feeling that you need to change but you don't know what. So hopefully you have somebody that you can ask, uh, somebody that is uh, competent to tell you the real answer to that question um, and also 
these kind of uh, camps are actually a moment for that as well. What I was thinking now, Dragon, as we were discussing, or both of dragons, um, uh, up until now, is something that players, I mean, they can follow the rest as well, but it is a bit more difficult than it is 10 o'clock. So um, uh, as far as I'm concerned, I'm okay if somebody has had enough and doesn't want to say, I will not get mad, I'm serious. Because, I mean, you don't need to sit here if you cannot follow something, or you don't want, or maybe you want to go to bed after the two sessions, sessions that you had today, um, that it will be totally fine, totally fine for me. Um, uh, and I think the rest would be much in more interesting for, for certain coaches to follow. And so I'm combining our language and English. What do you think? Should we just continue? I have nothing against. Did you understand what you just said? <coughs> Ako neko ne može, ako me već dosta stvarno, znači najozbiljnije ne ljudi se uopšte. Ako je dosta informacije, slobodno je ljudi. Da, pričamo o migračima. Da, napolen je da, mislim, ako želi neko ja, ako baš da ostane, ako ostane slobodno. Ako nećete, vidite, odvorite se danas napolen, da, mi je slučaj ujutro osam testiranje, ne valju nje nikako. Ako što treba, vidjet ćete na ovih dana. All right. So, oh wait, I need some water. Um, thank you. Uh, so we continue with the topic of uh, winning mentality. About what is winning mentality? It's actually a winning attitude. It's how you approach a certain situation. So it's not the mentality of a certain, like we call it, talk about mentality of a nation. No, this is an approach. How you see, as I said, certain situations. So it's a certain mindset, a way of thinking. And what I have been tell, telling you about how to approach the, uh, the uh, game uh, or, uh, or approach a win, approach especially the failure or defeat, that, that's a mentality, winning mentality, winning man's uh, uh, Winning mental set, or that's actually a mental set, but it can be winning one. So uh, the key words here with the winning mentality or the winning attitude is positivity, positive approach. I'm learning. I'm investing in myself. That's fine. I fail. Okay. I just need to. Whenever you fail, whenever you drop a ball, miss a goal, fail in any way, you what you have to know is why it happened. Because if you don't think about why it happened, how will you change it? When you don't know what happened. Right? Or when somebody, you know, when people reach a certain goal, but they cannot explain to us how they reached it. Do you think they will reach it again? Maybe in 20, 50 years or something, or 20, 30 years, or by chance somewhere. So you need to know what happened, what were the steps in certain situations. Or going back to the example of dropping the ball, missing a, bowl, uh, a goal, you have to know why it, ha why it happened. What did I do wrong in, those situ in that situation or in those all segments of the movement or whatever? That made me miss that. If you don't know it, ask. Then we'll go back to the communication. That's why it's important that you have good communication between each other and especially coach-player communication. Because you need to feel free. I want all the players to, not just mine, but all of you guys, to feel free to ask somebody for help and assistance. All right. Um, yeah, that's a, a good example of how positive attitude helps you with uh, uh, see, ignoring, to ignore and even drop it. Bless, bless you. Uh, to ignore and even profit from psychological mind games of the opponents that some of the opponents might try, might try to, to play. So what, what does that mean? When you have a positive attitude, you have the right attitude in all the situations, you will feel the power of your team in that moment, of the power of yourself and of your players as well that function the same way. Um, and that, uh, think about it or um, observe other uh, games uh, talk team games, uh, how they went through certain situations, 
that were they actually, I have some examples of course with, with uh, of course the unforgettable game, Serbia and Norway, where you actually, by focusing on yourself, you were better than the team that in reality, you don't have the quality of that team. So positivity, focusing on the right things, the right steps, how something can be reached, you actually um, do magic. You, you win games that you, um, in realistic life, you don't have the quality to win. So what? Believe. When you work, you believe, you communicate, you have good relationships, it will happen, people, it will happen. Then we need to mention the role of confidence, right? Of your, again, self-awareness. I love that ter term of self-confidence and the confidence, as we said already, in your team members. And then we have the team power that we just spoke about. That's team cohesion. When the team functions really good, simple words, that's team cohesion. And healthy relationships. We um, have all had situations in our teams and will have them because we're all human, only humans, where um, some situations might, might not be um, healthy, meaning in communication. Um, uh, if you have the right people present in the team staff, um, they will see it uh, before it develops, um, before the conflict develops. Um, they will see it at the level of maybe frustration, personal, interpersonal, whatever, but they will, if you have the right set of eyes in your team staff, the problems will be, of those, um, problems from my aspect will be seen on time, let's say, reacted and not developed. And that's a, a, a situation, it's a very, um, let's say, uh, <coughs> precious, precious, oh, where was it that? Uh, precious situation because you are, huh? <laughs> uh, because you are actually saving uh, energy, you're saving time, you're not losing money, especially in the top stories, top clubs. So um, again, very important all that. Mental toughness, you have probably heard about that as well. And um, this is a slide where we actually mention. Um, in a situation of a loss or a defeat, how do you stay mentally tough? And uh, what is normal, of course, as well, and it's important to mention to you guys to know that uh, we all act and differently, react differently. Uh, we're all a person for our uh, different people. We're, we're not the same. No, there's no two same people in the world, right? So uh, you need to accept that. Uh, I would say. Uh, also, not to compare yourself, especially not in the un unhealthy ways. Ask me later on what that means. I will get into more detail, but not right now. We don't have the time. So um, uh, there is a lot to read about. There is a, there is a lot to invest uh, um, into knowledge from, from uh, my field, from psychology. Um, I would like uh, to see more people uh, being aware of that. and. Um, Investing because you're not investing in me, you're investing in yourself. So, um, uh, and also become aware that people that like here today or this whole week, the people that will work with you, we all came here because we feel good to give something, to share something with amongst us and, um, and with you guys. And don't forget that we also learn from you. So it's not because we work somewhere here where you want to come on one day uh, that we know much more than you do. We know certain things and we have more experience that, they, that you do. We have reached certain things that you still haven't. But um, it is very important for us to have the opportunity to speak with you as well. So that, uh, you know, it's inspiring. It's inspiring to help somebody uh, see himself in a new way and to help him, you know, give him the hand and climb him up those stairs. At least that's how I see it. And I know people that I know here see that see it that way as well. Way as well. Um, okay. Or I will uh, mention our friend from Sweden. Oh, thank uh, like you, thank you said you. yesterday, um, the copycats are being original. That that in a way as well. Uh, he was actually yesterday telling you to uh, become 
self-aware, to know who you are, what your qualities are, what you can give to people in your team, at home, your friends, whatever. Just share. Uh, don't have the need, as I just said, to compare. Or he was saying imitate, copycatting, imitating. But, but be yourself, uh, become more aware of yourself, invest in yourself, and what? Love yourself, people. And um, yeah, I will tell you just a bit about myself right now. Why do I have all that energy in the last couple of years especially? Because I became that. I became more aware of myself. I worked on my self-confidence. My client had, clients has, uh, have helped me become who I am today as well in many different aspects. Somebody needs water. <laughs> so, um, uh, and I don't know if you guys would agree, but you probably would. The power of exchange for me, top. Why I love um, team sports? Because I have a lot of energy, um, a lot of energy, and um, to work in an individual sports to me is a bit, I will use the word boring. Uh, when I work one-on-one -on -one with a team of sports uh, uh, athlete, that's fine, that's different. But an individual sport does not inspire me in this way. But here, where I have a whole team of 20-something people and uh, maybe even 10 people in the staff, or like this group here, but it's much more dynamic and I feel more from the group in sports. I'm sorry, but that's how it is. Because right now you're you're new here, you don't know how to react. Maybe you would even want to react a certain way, but you don't have the self-confidence to do it. But I mean, uh, what I do, that's why I watch your eyes and body language, but eyes especially that I can see. But so when I give out, and when all those twenty-something people return, you get goosebumps. <laughs> and I mean, when you get to the level of entering the hall, and I mean, loving the squeaky sounds of shoes. Or loving when, like in Hannibal, what I like, I like to hear when bodies collide. That's so powerful, especially in top sports or in men's, like Final Four in Cologne. When you see them come out with all those torsos and, and with the powerful hits and powerful collisions, then you know at which level of passion uh, you are at and you're talking about. And uh, the passion, we all have passion over there. So if you feel your passion right now, and you keep investing in yourself and working hard, you will get there. We will see each other there. And here next year. <laughs> All right, let's go to the next one, just to see it. Uh, let me see. Um, okay, I already said that to you. I'm just keeping the focus on things that you need to develop. And move, that will help you move forwards and ask the right people. If you don't have, a, in your clubs right now, you don't feel like you have anybody to talk to, you can contact Dragan, or, and through him, contact some of us. And ask what you, but you, you, people, you have to want to ask. We're not gonna come up and take your hand and take you with us. Because, because that is also a test that Marco is going to do tomorrow, but from my aspect. I mean, if you are special, you will make the step towards me and ask me something. If you feel, uh, like you should do that at a certain moment. You don't have to right now, but I'm just saying in my example. Or maybe a better example is to use them as coaches because they're your handball coaches, right? And this is something that you're more familiar with. So use this period of this week to not just observe and do things that you are told to do, but ask why are we doing something if you didn't understand? If you are embarrassed to ask in front of the group, you have time throughout the whole day to call somebody on the side and ask, uh, can you please explain that? I didn't understand it. Or as I would like to say, I had a dory moment. You know the little dory fish? How confused she gets? So I call those dory moments. All right. <laughs> so um, just a second, this, I remember this was important. Yeah, this is um, something that um, is uh, in the, uh, in the Topics of communication, bonding, and interactions, um, interpersonal relations. Um, I like to stimulate my clients or my teams to, um, and we do that in our group sessions, to get to know each other better, to communicate, because um, I give them certain tasks that everybody has to do one by one, where um, a certain person, for example, when we, we start with a group where we are introducing ourselves, but since they all mostly know each other, right? What we do is 
um, they have a task to, to say what each of them uh, thinks uh, are her or his strengths and why. What do they think, uh, uh, what would they say are their weaknesses and why. And then they, I give the word to the rest of the group where the group is stimulated to give back feedbacks on what the player has said. So that's how we interact, how we bond, how we uh, uh, make a, or give a, make an opportunity for the, uh, of, uh, out of this situation for that player to hear in many situations for the first time what the team really thinks about, in this case, it was all her, it was all women's teams. Um, and that's how we do it, we go one by one. Sometimes if uh, we need, we take uh, two group class uh, sessions with the break or in two, we do it in two days. But everybody has to go through it and everybody has to hear the reaction. And of course, as we go on with the, with the workshop or the, the exercise, you actually um, get more and more, because people realize, right, that you get more and more reactions. And um, I really like doing that, and I do it whenever there's, let's say, time, because of my experiences where I didn't have time. But it is, uh, I mean, uh, an hour and a half, you always have. And if you're um, skilled enough, you can even do it with, uh, what, 19 players, an hour and a half as well. So even when, sometimes when we don't have time, you, this uh, the skilled person can do it um, very well. All right. Let's just mention a couple of things about uh, mentally tough, being mentally tough in loss. So you will need to understand that it is okay, you need time. It will not happen, uh, you will not resolve the, the mess in your head or in your soul in two seconds. We need time. Somebody can do it in a couple of uh, minutes at a certain level, depending on what happened. Some other people need a couple of hours. Somebody need, needs a couple of days. Couple of weeks. Okay, we have an issue then. I would not even like to hear that it takes a couple of days. But uh, again, depending on the level and on, on the uh, level of education, meaning uh, how much per a person is informed about this or psychology. Uh, again, look for a lesson. What did I learn from that? And as we said, don't take it personally. It doesn't mean that you are not good enough for something. It means that you need to work on something. That's all it means, people. It doesn't mean anything else but that. And very important, right? Do something about it. Don't just conclude, okay? Hmm, I didn't take it personally. There is a lesson that I need to learn it, and I need to learn that. But then you don't go and do it. You don't practice it after the uh, the next day during practice section or after practice. And what I really do like to see, especially on the developing levels, is people coming earlier, staying later after the practice and investing more time than is actually on schedule. Well, that tells us that you're ready for something, that you see yourself somewhere, and that you will probably, if you continue that, um, you will get reached there. We reset. Uh, I don't know, if, have you ever heard about the 24-hour rule? Um, it comes from the States, and um, they had a rule in hockey over there. I thought it was very interesting to share. Um, uh, to, uh, if something negative happened, especially like a coach-player situation, maybe somebody got um, cameras on, uh, use another word. <laughs> if somebody got mad at somebody else and acted uh, the way they should not have acted, um, then they had this rule where in the next 24 hours from that moment or from the game, you're not allowed to discuss that. And with those 24 hours, they give themselves time to calm down, to, re, uh, to regain control of the emotions again, and themselves, therefore, right? And then after those 24 hours, they approach and talk about the issue that happened on the game or wherever it happened. And it is interesting. Um, maybe I wouldn't uh, use the 24 hours always, but it is seem to know about it. Maybe you can read more about it. So it's a 24-hour rule. So we need to learn to handle emotions. To know what we feel, how we feel. You know, when, uh, when I ask people, especially like if I were to go and ask this group individually, 
Um, uh, you would be surprised how much we don't know how to verbalize ourselves. Like say exactly how you felt in a certain moment or be precise in how or why you think something about something. Because um, maybe we're not just at certain levels stimulated enough to talk uh, or to, to think, actually first to talk, but we're more asked to do something which we accept, not asking why do I need to do that. So it is very much okay and uh, I would like you guys to start thinking more about why you do something and asking more, uh, become more interested about uh, your improvement. So not wait for somebody to improve you, but make the step and improve yourself. Uh, that aspect as well, right? So the emotions uh, and how you handle that. We're going to skip that now. So emotions are very important in all this. Um, successful coaches, just sit, let me see this. Uh, oh yeah, the successful coaches and successful athletes, um, they have the, uh, the skill the uh, mental strength and the experience to uh, react more adequately, more quickly than others due to all those things that I just mentioned, right? So um, what they are able to do, let's say when they lose a certain game, especially an important one, they regain control pretty quickly, especially if they're experienced. So it's not something that happened for the first time, but it has happened a couple of times in their, um, I was going to say lifetime, but career is a better word. So, but what makes those people different from the others is that after, the win, after they win a game, they continue to work. And after they lose a the game, they continue to, to work. So they always have only an option to work. Uh, what they are going to work on is something that depends on what happened. But they're always going to work. So working is not an option, it's something that they do. Improve the game. That's how they differ from everybody else. So this is what this is the end. And this is what I would like you to maybe even uh, I'm all gonna open up all these. I would like maybe even take a photo if you would want to invest in yourself and you have your phones here. Um, but think about how do you react in certain situations? Coping? How do you handle coping handling? How do you handle certain situations, uh, certain approaches, uh, certain issues, something that uh, think of as many situations as you can, as many different situations as you can that happen to you on practice uh, sessions and during games especially. And uh, think about how you feel in each one of those and think about why you think you felt that way in those situations. And um, on the other aspect of cognition, meaning the thoughts, think about um, um, how did those situations uh, affect on how you continue on working, on practice, communicating with a certain person if there was an issue of that kind and so on. So the more you start thinking, the better you're going to become. You have to activate. I mean, if a top, top coach right now had to choose people from this room, he would choose those that are the takers. He would not choose the one that has the best potential here, but is just sitting there and scratching himself. I bet that would be the case. So it is very important, and believe me, we see that people that have experience, uh, the more experienced they are, the more, the more they see. The more you are, as our parents like to say, the more they're reading your book. So uh, if you want to use that in a good way, be positive towards yourself, towards your improvement, communicate, ask, take. Be, as people like to use the word, very popular word this last couple of weeks, uh, years, be proactive. That's proactivity. And think about, do you communicate with somebody? Who is that? Do you have somebody more competent to communicate to, uh, with? Uh, do you have a chance to, to make a certain contact with somebody? Um, to maybe have a chance to sometimes uh, maybe even send a mail to ask something? Find solutions. Networking people. 
The better network you have, the more developed you're going to get and the better you're going to get. So to conclude this, what do I have to work on more? Which of these aspects that we mentioned today, or maybe that we didn't have a chance to mention today, but you thought of during the lecture? How can I help myself? How can I help my team on the, these aspects, and in this case, mental uh, toughness, after mis mistakes or a lost game or whichever situation? Just think about how you can invest and um, do something for yourself that will make you feel really powerful and um, achieved one day. If it's not sport, if it's something else that you choose that you do in your life, do it with the same logic. Because the, the, when you reach that moment of self-awareness and self, uh, um, when, you, uh, when you actually feel achieved personally and professionally, it, it, I cannot explain how powerful that is. You feel like you can do anything that you want, even by yourself sometimes if it's needed. Um, you can imagine how powerful that it is when you are surrounded with those kinds of people and you know, when you have um, all been um, kind of gathered like in a team to reach a certain goal and a, a certain vision. So these are just uh, advices that I'm going to open up and this is also something that you could take a photo of. So find a professional that can help you. Choose the right person for you to be help, to take the help from, let's say, so a competent person. Um, be ready to invest yourself in that. So now don't expect, for example, for example, if you're working with a strength and conditioning coach, don't just expect to come there and uh, follow everything that Marco Marco tells you to, and that's all that you need to do. You need to be uh, to, together active with him and to learn because uh, uh, after every practice session, you don't need to just complete it, but learn from it, people. If you did not remember certain things from the practice session, you were just doing it, not learning from it. All right, and this was a suggestion, and the last one was a suggestion for the coaches uh, that I was talking at, uh, with or to at the moment to start from the beginning of the season, and maybe some of them heard that. All right, so the thought for the end that we're gonna um, finish up with is that failure is not the opposite of success, it is part of our success. And I really liked this when I saw it, so I knew I would put it. And thank you for this and for sharing. <laughs>
about success and failure. There it says, if I play a good game, if I have two games during the week, and if I play a good game and we won, I watch that game. I want to see myself successful. If we play bad and I, my performance was bad, I don't watch that game. I watch the game when I play good, because next game coming. And that's the way, like Bayern says, if you lose, you have to work. If you win, you have to work. If those other people coming to win you, to beat you. Gentlemen, uh, this lady is an example of how you can help your teams or yourself individually if we all rise level of our athletes, we have better team. On SNC things, on psychological and mental support, from goalkeeper side, from defense and offense side. If we have better individual, we have better team, and that's our target. Once again, thank you so much for having